Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place, that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet might be fulfilled, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. God is with us right here, right now. This present moment, this Christmas present, his presence. That's what we want to unwrap here this morning, together, to unwrap that presence, to unwrap the presence of him here with us, because so often, as, as true as it is, we, we miss it. We let so many other things get in the way. When I was a kid, like a lot of kids, most of you, no doubt, I raced through things. If I liked it, the more I liked it, the more I tended to just race through it, even Christmas presents. Just like get to it as fast as you can because that's just what you do. But the older I get, not that I'm getting all that old, but the older I get, the more I'm learning. I'm trying to learn to, to sip and to savor and to hold things in my hand and hold them in my heart and hold them in my mind and in my mouth and just hold on to it and think about it and be thankful and to behold the beauty of the present, to say, this is lovely, this is wonderful right now. Mamie, go tell it later. <laughs> This is, this is the listening time, Amy. We're going to sing in just a minute. <laughs> the best present I could have this morning is having Mamie here with us. What, what a gift. What a gift. Total, total surprise to me, and that's the way it is with so many presents. You, you didn't expect it. You weren't looking for it. And, and what a gift. His present right now his presence right here that's what we want to just unwrap you know i've been in the habit most of my life like a lot of you of, of saying something that begins with i'll be glad when like i'll be glad when this is over i'll be i'll be glad when i'm out of school i'll be glad when the kids are finally put to bed tonight <laughs> I'll, I'll be glad when I finally can retire and get to do the things that I want to do. But I'm beginning to realize that if I don't learn to be glad here and now, I'm not going to suddenly become glad there and then. I'm just wasting the present because I'm thinking that somehow later I'm going to learn what I haven't learned right now. And we've all seen those bumper stickers that, that say things like, I'd rather be fly fishing at Dinky Creek, or I'd rather be skiing at Sierra Summit, or I'd rather be throwing away my entire paycheck at Table Mountain. And, you know, things where, where people are, and I was behind a person at a stoplight a couple of weeks ago, and this guy's bumper sticker said, I'd rather be here, now. And I thought, what's up with this guy? <laughs> And I looked at his car, and I thought, it's nothing to be so happy about. I mean, if I were driving that car, I don't know that I'd be, want to be there. And, and it wasn't even a clean car. And besides, he stopped at a stoplight, for heaven's sake. He's obviously heading in a direction that he can't go. And he's sitting there, and he'd rather be there. And I'm thinking, my bumper sticker is, I'd rather be a little further down the road. That's kind of the way I live. I'd, I'd, rather, be just a, I'd rather be ahead of you. I'd rather be a little further toward wherever. But, you know, when I read that, of course, it caused me to stop. I'm at a stoplight anyway, but it causes me to stop and say, you know what? Again, stoplights are a gift. If you stop and think, here I am. This is the present. Where's the beauty? 
Where's the gift of, of right here and now? And so with that kind of thought in mind, the present. This combination of folks right here, right now, it's one of a kind. Like the beauty of a snowflake, this exact combination, and there is more beauty, you, you may not realize it. It's not the eyes in your head, it's the eyes of your heart. And the more you invest in a community of people, the more you have learned to accept love and give love within a family environment, the more you realize how precious the combination of people is. And so to appreciate that, I'm going to give you 60 seconds. That's not very long. Just, just about 60 seconds for each of you to, and, and I'm going to tell you go in just a second, just a minute. I'm going to invite each, I know you usually don't do this because it's kind of a, a canned, awkward sort of thing, but right now I'm going to do it. I'm going to say go, and I'm just going to invite you to turn to somebody nearby and just to say something kind. You know, you don't have to be inventive, you don't have to be clever, you just, just good morning, that's kind. Just good morning, or Merry Christmas, or nice to see you, or nice to meet you, or some, something like that, but go, do it, go ahead. And so it takes longer than 60 seconds, but just bear in mind that whenever you're trying to unwrap the present, you gotta consider the people who are around you. Right then, right there, at the present, whether you're in line, whether you're at a stoplight, you gotta think about the people, because whoever's around you right then in the present, whoever's around you right then, those who are the near buyers, those are the neighbors. And the neighbors are the ones we've gotta to learn to love. And, and those couple of kind words or a kind smile or something that you give, not just here, but in the present, later. Those may be the last kind words and the last kind face that that person will see in that day because you don't know where people are headed. You don't know what kind of people, what kind of unkind people they're going to have to be around the rest of the day. And so you share a little bit of kindness, you share a little bit of love. What, what a gift. You never know what Mamie's gonna say. I have to be careful. But right, right here, right now, the present, his presence, none of you are alone. Not now. None of you. None of you are alone. You get to hear the kids, you get to hear Mamie, you get to hear one another. None of you are alone, none of you are lost. Because you belong. I don't care if you carry a card that says you belong. You belong. God so loved the world, and he welcomes you here. You belong. You're not lost. When you leave here, you may still wonder about a job and schooling and whatever else, but you're not lost because you belong. And right now, every one of you is close by somebody who cares because it's not just canned words. Not, not here. There is sincerity. And this is a precious present that's certainly worthy of celebrating. Now, I know kids are always in a hurry, and you kids that are here today, you're just wanting me to get done so you can go do something fun. And that's fine. I promise you this is going to be short. Even though I'm having fun, I'm going to cut my fun short for you. And actually, I'm having fun having you guys in here because you may think I'd like to kick you out every week, but I don't. It's, you know, I, w I wish there were a way that we could do this more often, and it's, it's, it's great to be with you. But I know you, that's why you go to the classrooms because there's a lot more fun happening in, in, in those settings. But at any rate, I'm going to keep it kind of brief because even when we're dealing with presents, like I said, when I was a kid, the, the Paper wrapping was just an obstacle that got in the way of what I really wanted. Quick, get, get that out of the way. I didn't care about wrapping any more than I did about the bag that held my Cheetos or pork rinds or whatever I want to get to, just ah, tear it open and let's get to the, to the goodies. But, but now, old man that I am, because I've been doing some investing over the years, 
Now I know that a lot of love goes into even the wrapping, even the trimmings. There's a lot of love that goes into that. And now when I unwrap something, I look for the love. And I always find it. I look at the details. I savor it. I don't just race through it. I look at it. And so unwrapping the present, I would just, if you haven't already, you probably have. But you look at all this stuff here, you know, it, it, mo uh, so much of it is, is handmade. And if, and if you don't know the folks who did it, it's because they're not trying to be on parade. But if you hang around here, if you invest time in a community, in a family, you get to actually know who's behind all the different things, which makes it even more beautiful. When you, when you see how people have spent time with every little detail, with every loving gesture that goes into it. And so whenever I'm wrapping the present, it's, it's all about seeing the love and to see how much has been invested there and to appreciate that. Thank you, God, that's, that's good. And of course, the greatest gift of all is Jesus. We know that, it's his birthday. And Jesus is a very present present. What about him? Do you see him? Don't look there. I just looked there so you'd look there. That's a, that, that is plastic or, or rubberized synthetic something or other. It's, it's cute. It's fine. It has a purpose. It's part of the story. But if you're looking for Jesus, he promised two or three gathered in his name. And he is present. He's here. Two or three gathered in his name. That's not the magic number. That's the minimal number for human contact. You've got to have at least two. Three is even better. But that's the minimal number for human contact because whenever we love and support and care for one another, we're coming into contact with Jesus. He says, whatever you do in regard to the least of my family, that's me. And being involved with him in that way, it comes when we learn to love and care about and honor one another, appreciate one another, even the least. Did you, you know, it's Jesus' birthday, or at least in a couple of days we celebrate that. Do you, do you realize that we sang happy birthday to, to Jesus last week? We did. We sang, we sang to Mark Carter. We sang happy birthday because it was his birthday and we sang to Jesus because Mark is at least one of the least of the family. I, I, I think he's one of the most. I, I, I think it's a treasure to me to have known Mark since I was a kid and he was a kid and Tina was a kid. And then those two kids got married and then they had kids and their kids are off doing wonderful things in other parts of the world but there's no friends like old friends. No, no blessing like the blessing of recurring, coming back round again and, and, and seeing folks again. And so, yeah, we, we sang to Jesus when we sang to him. But since it's Christmas, we can sing happy birthday to, to Jesus again. Are, are any of you having a birthday today? Any of you having a... Whoa! Okay, and how, how about this week? Any, any of you having a birthday this week? Okay, okay, i tell you what, there's going to be too many names. To, how many of you are having a birthday next year? Yeah. Hey, May, Mamie, are you having a birthday next year? Yeah. May, Mamie is going to be 102 next year. So I'll tell you what, let's, let's go ahead and sing happy birthday to, to Jesus, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, rather than say happy birthday to Mamie and John and Vicky and whoever else, we're just going to sing it to Jesus, and then everyone's covered, okay? So happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Don't you like that? Dear Jesus. And dear Tina, she just comes up there and she knows 
what key I sing best in. She picked. For years, I, back in the day, she would, and then she used to do this one, uh, you know, where it was all this mournful stuff, and then all the Beethoven's versions of Happy Birthday, and, and Bach, and all these wonderful things. We, we had, for me, a 30th birthday party, and everyone back then had to put gray in their hair and paint lines on their faces, and now we're there. But, but, but uh, Tina, what a gift to just sit down and lead us and, and sing it. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Dear Jesus, you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. How many of you have sins? Anywhere, any time in your life. Most of you raised your hand. Some of you didn't because you're perfect. But no, you, you probably didn't know because sometimes we think sins are some terrible, terrible thing. You've got to search your conscience. But sin just means you didn't hit the bullseye. Every single time you didn't hit perfection every time. It means you miss once in a while. And if you put it that way, how many of you have weaknesses? Of course. How many of you... Uh, fail once in a while? How many of you have problems? Yes, 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 yes. You're not alone. That's the deal. You're not alone. We call his name Jesus for he will save his people. You are his people. You're not alone because you're his people. Now, if I said, who's perfect here? And one of you had the audacity to, to raise your hand, I'm perfect, then you are alone. You're in your own little world. <laughs> Or, or, in fact, if you were really perfect, you'd be alone because no one else here is perfect. And like we saw the last few weeks in Luke's gospel, Jesus was perfect and Jesus was alone. And Jesus there in the Garden of Gethsemane went through something for us that he didn't have to go through. He was seeking some help, some his closest friends, the ones he'd done the most for. He said, could you, could you, my, my soul is distressed to the point of death. Can you, can you pray with me for a while? And even those guys fell asleep. But Jesus wasn't angry. He wasn't bothered. He said that the spirit's willing, but the flesh is weak. He knows that. We're all, we're all weak. But Jesus is strong. Let's, let's, let's do that. We are weak, but he is strong. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him. We are weak. We are weak. He is strong. He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Amen. Amen. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, I, I, uh, I don't, I'm not carrying my phone because I'd probably forget to turn off the ringer, but uh, I, I, I recorded on my phone Mamie singing that song. Because she was singing it. So I recorded it on there. And then, of course, once we were done, it, it, the wonderful thing is it's always the present. And she's in that beautiful presence and going through the, the hallway. She just, she wouldn't stop singing that song. <laughs> everywhere we went, yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. And she had just about everybody in there singing that song. <laughs> and a lot of them didn't know a lot of things, but they... And they might not have known what they were singing, but you know what? None of us fully know. And even when we do our worst, as Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They don't really know. But we are weak. He is strong. And he'll save his people, the weak ones, from our weaknesses, whatever they are. That's why we delight in him. Because he's not ashamed to call us family. He's not ashamed to be associated with us. And you know, the present, it goes with you. When you leave here, it's always now. And his presence goes with you. When you leave here, he's always there. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. In him we live and move and have our being. 
And I, I'm learning, as I'm, I'm thinking about this a lot, and I'm learning, I think, what is the most essential thing of my life, the most essential lesson. Learning to unwrap the present. Wherever I'm at, unwrap it. Slowly, thoughtfully, thankfully, to see what's really there. That's what prayer is. What's really here? To unwrap it. Because maybe a little bit like me, for some of you, I tend to wrap up the present in some of the ugliest paper. Whatever most recently has come in front of my face, I wrap up the present and I don't even see the beauty. I wrap up the present in some fear, some worry about the future. I wrap up the present in some sort of pain, regret over the past. Something maybe long past, but I just haven't got past it. And there it is wrapping up the present and I don't see the beauty around me. And prayer isn't just hanging out your dirty laundry or your wish list before God. It's, it's learning to unwrap the present and enjoy the beauty all around you. Whatever is true and honorable and pure and lovely, whatever is worthy of praise, whatever is a good report, set your mind upon those things. And that's not the first of a set of verses there in Philippians chapter 4, but that's the place where you set your mind. Where it begins is this, in everything, which means everywhere, by prayer and supplication, which is just talking to God about it, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. And that's the most important part. Thanksgiving. Find something beautiful. Find something kind. Find something good. Do something kind and good. Be thankful. And then tell them about the past. Tell them about the concern for the future. But in that way, the presence is enjoyed. In that way, the beauty is beheld. Emmanuel. God is with us. God is for us. He knows we're weak. Of course we're ignorant. But he loves us. He loves us. Let's pray. Our Father, feed us today. Forgive us for yesterday. Deliver us tomorrow and all the days ahead. Father, thank you that we belong to your family. Thank you that you so love the world, you don't want anybody to feel lost or alone or separated or unwanted or unworthy. You don't want anyone wasting their lives away. You love all. Thank you, Lord, that we're hearing it here this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we're trying to be aware of it right now. Your love for us. Thank you, Lord, for the signs we see of it around us. Thank you for the trimmings and the wrappings and the, the love in the people who gave kind words to us this morning. Thank you, Lord, that none of us right now, none of us are alone. None of us far from someone who, who does care. Lord, we have our fears about the future. We have our regrets about the past. But what a beautiful present we have right now. What a gift to enjoy you. What a gift to have the little ones. What a gift that we all are your little ones. What a treasure to have Mamie with us again. How blessed we are to have this choir and to have Tina and Mark and Sandra and all the folks that help in so many ways around here. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you for the present. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.